Who's this? This is Kelly, the devourer. She's a negative mother, so to speak, from the mythological perspective. And I find her very interesting. She's the best representation of this sort of thing that I've ever seen. Now, if the myth thing, you think, myths, they last a long time, sometimes tens of thousands of years. And they, they often even last across cultures. And you think, well, what the hell is it? What could a story actually be telling you that could be useful given that much change? Well, the mythological world that stories are concerned with is composed of three things. The unknown, well, it's always there. It doesn't matter when you live or where you live or who you are. That's part of your experience. It's always going to be part of your experience. It doesn't matter how much you know. There's always things that you can't predict. The more you know, well, the more potential problems there are because knowledge in itself even breeds new problems. That's always there. The fact of culture is always there. Right? I mean, the cultures may change, but the fact that there's culture and that you're a product of culture and that you have to add to it or at least establish some relationship to it that it protects you and creates you and that you contribute to it, that never changes. And the fact that you're the intermediary between those two forces, that never changes. And that's what myth describes, those three things. This is a representation of the unknown. The unknown is also, as well as being the thing that gives rise to everything, it's also the thing that destroys everything. It's, un it's the things that we cannot control that in the final analysis lead to our demise. It's our ignorance that causes our death, in a sense. We just can't stop something. We can't stop aging. We can't stop disease. We can't stop starvation. Those are all things that we haven't got a grip on. They're all things that are still unknown and unpredictable. And sooner or later, they get us. So, let's look at Kelly. So the first thing I'd like to say is that I said the unknown automatically frightens us. There are other things that automatically frighten us, more or less. There's some dispute about this in the behavioral literature. There are things that you can learn to become afraid of very easily. Spiders, snakes, fire, blood, skeletons, disembodied bodies. I mean, those are all elements of horror movies. It's pretty obvious that people are more or less afraid of them. It's not that difficult to figure out why. The only debate in the, in the, bio, in the psychological literature is whether those fears are actually innate or whether you have to acquire them through very brief exposure. It doesn't matter as far as I'm concerned. The point is, is that those things might be regarded as... Um, extraordinarily appropriate representatives of the unknown. What's myth trying to do? It's trying to encapsulate behavioral wisdom. Under what circumstances? In what world? Well, the answer to that is in the world that's composed of the unknown, the known, and the mediating force. If you have to adapt to the unknown, which you have to do, the thing to do, logically, say you have an infinite amount of time at your disposal, is to come up with a representation of what the unknown is. A strange thing to do because you don't know what it is. So the question is, how the hell can you represent it? But the one thing you do know about it that's always the case is that it makes you afraid and it makes you curious. So if you want to make a representation of it, then you use those things that you do know something about that either make you afraid or curious. So let's look at this figure. A figure to whom, whom at some point in history, and not so long ago, human sacrifices were actually offered. And we're, at, we're going to look a little bit at the reasons for that. This is Kelly. She is the thing that everything goes back to. She's a representative of the unknown. Well, let's look at her. Now, she's something that produces religious devotion in those who apprehend her presence. Seizure of meaning, fundamentally, which you could assimilate to a religious experience. She has eight legs like a spider. She spins the web of faith. That's the reason. The web is made out of fire. Her hair's on fire, too, by the way. Uh, she sits in the middle of that web. She has a headdress of skulls and usually has a, a snake around her waist. A snake's a symbol of transformation because it sheds its skin, so theoretically it's something that's reborn. But anyways, um, she often has staring eyes and protruding teeth, which is something else that people are pretty much uh, innately predisposed to respond to. And she is so, in her hands are tools of creation and destruction. And she's simultaneously giving birth to this gentleman and eating him. But that is a symbol of that. And I would say, well, okay. now you understand two things. You understand that you have an innate response to the unknown, and that it's a permanent constituent element of experience from the perspective of emotion. And if you look at figure like that, then you can get some apprehension of 
what it is that people are trying to avoid contact when they attempt to maintain things predictably. 